Yes, people, what is going on? So today, we're gonna to be talking about what a false nine is and the role of a false nine within a team. So throughout time, the number nine has always been associated with the team's centre forward and the focal point of the attack. A true nine looks to lead the line and play up against the opposition centre backs. Their role is to usually either run in behind or hold the ball up and wait to bring others into play. A false nine is a lot different. Rather than a play up against the centre backs, a false nine will look to drop deeper and play between the lines. Although the primary role of a number nine is to score goals, a false nine is given the freedom to create chances for others, whether that is through dribbling with the ball or playing an intricate pass. Seeing a team play with a false nine is common in today's game, despite the position being anything but new. The position of false nine was first made famous by the Austrian striker Matthias Sindelar, otherwise known as the Mozart of football. In the 1930s, Sindelar captained the great Austrian national team in the 1934 World Cup. The Austrian coach Hugo Mitzel adjusted the conventional WM formation to permit Sindelar to drop deeper and have more of an influence in the build-up play. 40 years down the line and the late great Johan Cruyff was another player to flourish in the role as a false nine. The Dutchman would go on to establish himself as one of the greatest players of his generation during his time with Ajax and the national team. On top of his technical ability, Cruyff's ability to read the game meant he was always one step ahead of the opposition. He would often drop deep or go into wider positions to impose himself on the game and take possession in order to create chances for others. In recent times, there has been no better false nine than the Argentinian wizard himself, Lionel Messi. During Pep's time at Barcelona, he would go on to make a lot of tactical changes, but nothing quite as significant as moving Messi from the right wing and into the centre. The role suited Messi down to a T. It enabled him to be more involved in the build-up play, as well as use his superior dribbling skills. The effect of Messi as a false nine couldn't have been more evident than a 2011-2012 season, in which Messi scored 73 goals in all competitions, breaking a previous record of 67 goals by the late, great Gerd Müller. More recently, Liverpool's Roberto Firmino is another player who has flourished as a false nine. Firmino's off-the-ball work is something to be admired. Despite his technical ability on the ball, Firmino makes unselfish runs for Mane and Salah to capitalise. Firmino often drops deep, pulling one of the centre-backs with him, leaving space in behind for either Salah or Mane to make a run from wide into centre. So let me show you what a false nine does and how it affects the team. So as we touched on briefly earlier, the role of a number nine is to lead the line and be the focal point of the attack. A true nine looks to play on the shoulders of the defenders. This is over to exploit the space in behind to receive either a through ball or get on the end of a cross or they may hold the ball up to bring their team further up the pitch and then bring others into play. So whereas a true nine will look to play high up the pitch, a false nine will look to drop deep and play between the lines. This role creates a problem for both the centre backs and the central midfield players. If a centre back decides to track the false nine, this will leave space in behind for either a winger to run into or an onrushing midfield player. Or if the central midfield player tracks the false nine, this will create an overload in the midfield for the team in possession, making it a lot more difficult for the opposition to get the ball back. If the centre back does track the false nine, this will leave no other option but the full back to tuck in in order to reduce the space in behind. This then leaves an option out wide for the winger to receive the ball. If no one tracks the false nine, this will cause huge problems for the defending team. They're able to receive the ball, which enables them to either dribble at their opponents, play through balls, or use combination play to create goal scoring opportunities. A false nine can cause havoc for any defense with the right personnel, but what attributes does a good false nine need to have? One good thing a false nine needs is spatial awareness. A good false nine should be able to read the game very well, as well as pick up positions in order to receive the ball and cause the opposition problems. Another thing is creativity. A good false nine should be able to exploit the gaps and mistakes in the opposition's defense in order to create chances for their teammates. A good false nine should also have good technical ability. A good false nine should be able to pick the ball up on the half turn, drive at their opponents whilst looking for that killer pass. Finally, an attribute that any player should have as well as a good false nine is work rate. A good false nine must work hard as they often set the tempo of the attack, whether that is dropping deep to receive the ball or leading a the line. They're often the link between the defence and the attack. Over recent times, we have seen less and less out and out false nines. This is primarily due to tactical changes. More teams are looking to press the opposition or play with three and five man defences in order to prevent space and time on the ball. A way in which players are able to prevent the effect of a false nine is congesting the midfield. By bringing players into a more defensive role and incorporating a defensive midfield player, you're able to prevent the space between the lines. 
So that is what a false nine is and how it can affect the team. So what do you think of the position? Who is currently the best false nine in the world at the moment? Let me know in the comment section below. But once again, don't forget to like and subscribe for more upcoming videos. And until next time, peace.